one, today we're going to talk about acids. So what are acids? Acids are what we refer to as proton donors. So these are solutions, once you place them in water, they release hydrogen ions, that's all positively charged ions in solution. Now, before we even go into acids and the different colors of indicators in acids, I want to take you over there so we can look at common acids used in the laboratory. Right here we have hydrochloric acid, and you know of course that this is found in the stomach of mammals. So this industrial acid is made by dissolving the gas hydrogen chloride in water. So we create hydrochloric acid and it's a monoprotic or monobasic acid. Here we have sulfuric acid that's made in the contact process. It's a diprotic acid. And I want you to look at the movement of the acid in the bottle because it's actually an organic liquid. When you place it in water, then it releases hydrogen ions. It will release two of them. So the more dilute the solution, the more H plus ions will be released there. So it's actually stronger, the more dilute it is. Right here we have nitric acid. It's a monoprotic acid. So it releases one hydrogen ion in solution and nitric acid dissolves everything. An important safety feature that we must know is that when or if any of these two acids um, spill on you in the lab in the concentrated format, please use paper towel or a washcloth and gently pat the acid off your skin. Do not put your hand on the water because when these acids are dissolving in water, it releases a lot of heat energy. So if they spill on you and you put your hand on the water, then what will happen now is that it's going to burn you thermally and also chemically. So we're now going to look at the colors of different indicators in acids. We have five indicators right now, screen methyl orange, methyl orange, phenolphthalein, litmus, red and blue litmus paper, and pH paper. So I want to show you the effect or the color that indicators will show in acids. So I'm going to use sulfuric acid, pour it in this petri dish right here. And notice how I use my reagent bottle. So when you're pouring, you don't pour where the label is, you cover the label because if acid runs down, you don't want it um, messing up your label so you don't know what is in the bottle. And the reagent stopper, you place it down like this. You do not want to place it down like that because dirt particles and stuff could contaminate the stopper and it would fall into the solution. So that's one way we could do it or I could simply hold it when I'm pouring. So this is now nitric acid. Pour it in the middle. And uh, dilute sulfuric acid. So this stopper, it won't stay on its back, so I'll just keep it in my hand while I pour. So we have these three acids. So let us look at the effect of acids on blue litmus paper. Blue litmus paper changes to red. So you see pink color, we call it red in the lab. Whoops. <laughs> then uh, let's look at the effect of this acid on the blue litmus paper. So it changes to red. And again, so it doesn't matter which acid you use. Once you use blue litmus paper in it, it is going to change to red. So this is red litmus paper. Put it in there, it remains red. Do the same thing here, it remains red. Do the same thing here, it remains red. The point of this is that blue litmus will change to red. If you don't have any blue litmus paper when you're doing your experiment, just get red litmus paper. Once you know there's an acid at a base, if the red remains the same, then you know that it's an acid. Let's look at the effect of acid on pH paper. I'll bring this one closer to you so you can match it to the scale because we have to do that. So in this acid, which is the dilute hydrochloric acid, it changes to 
this color so we can match it to the scale what pH are you seeing so you can decide that one and this acid right here this is a nitric acid so again what pH are you seeing so you can decide that one and over here we have the sulfuric acid what pH are you seeing so again you decide I've gotten rid of the petri dishes with the acids that I use to test the litmus paper and the pH paper so now I'm going to use test tubes to show you the color of these indicators in acids. The first acid I'm using is sulfuric acid. And I'm using approximately two and a half or three cm cubes. You must always have your paper towel in the lab too. So if anything is running down the sides, it will not damage you. So I'll pour the same amount in the different test tubes. before I add the indicator to it. Alright, so remember I'm just eyeballing the measurements right now. Let's look at the effect or the color of screen methyl orange in sulfuric acid. So we have this green indicator and look at the color in acid. Let's look at the color of methyl orange now in sulfuric acid. And so this orange looking liquid now changes to this pink color. And uh, phenolphthalein, which is colorless, if I add it to acids, what will happen? Nothing appears to happen because phenolphthalein is colorless in acids. So I'm going to change, but it's really redundant what I'm going to do next because ultimately these are all acids. But just to show you with another acid now, this is nitric acid. Let me put this one to the side. So if I pour some nitric acid, let me not use that test tube. I pour some nitric acid in here. And I'm going to pour it here again because these are all acids they're just solutions that give up protons which are H plus ions and all of the indicators will react the same see nitric acid is used as a cleaning agent so when students use this test tube before it was not rinsed out properly so it dissolved whatever residue was there let me change it to this test tube now all right so acids all form colorless solutions so you'll never have any colored acid so this is just nitric acid now same process one drop of screen methyl orange so look same effect so it doesn't matter which acid is used the indicator will show the same color in acids and that's just, that is what it's supposed to do should show one color in acids and another color in bases and a phenolphthalein of course will be colorless so this is what the indicators look like in acid. So screen methyl orange, 
methyl orange and phenolphthalein for two different acids sulfuric acid and nitric acid so we're going to pause and i'm going to fill not really fill them but pour some acid in two different boiling tubes to show magnesium ribbon and magnesium powder dissolving in it Now I'm going to dissolve magnesium, both magnesium ribbon and powder in some sulfuric acid. So let me pour out the acid in the boiling tube. The boiling tubes are larger than the test tubes. So right here we have a test tube. All right, and here we have a boiling tube. So the boiling tubes are larger. That is how you know how to recognize them in the lab. So I'm just pouring some sulfuric acid in them and I'm going to react magnesium ribbon and magnesium powder with the sulfuric acid. Before we do that, this is what the magnesium ribbon looks like. So we just break off a piece and then we we'll drop it in the acid when we need to. In terms of the magnesium powder, it is just powdered, literally powdered metal. So that's what it looks like. The first thing to do now, let us drop a piece of the magnesium ribbon in the boiling tube. So you can see that it's dissolving, and while it's dissolving, a gas is being produced. So all that bubble, all the bubbles that you see, we refer to it as effervescence, and it indicates that a gas is being produced in solution. And this gas is hydrogen gas, and when we're doing the lab test for gases, you will test for it using a splint, a lighted splint. So you can see the magnesium that was looking gray dark gray while well, ago it's looking a bit shiny because the surface of the metal is being corroded I'm gonna just put this in the test tube rack and we're going to add some magnesium powder to the other boiling tube and I want you to look at the rate at which the reaction is happening To put them side by side. So in this one, the ribbon appears to have been dissolved completely. Effervescence is being produced more rapidly where the powder was used. So I'll let it rest in the test tube reactor for a while until the reaction stops. So the next thing we'll be looking at now would be the reactions of bases. And see you in the next video. We'll start it soon.